What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to an episode of the Oscar Beats the Yucks podcast. I'm Sam. That is Mike. Today, we're going to be breaking down the Seahawks corner back room and some options that are available there. Before we dive in, real quick, subscribe. Let's do it. If the button is, is red, um, you will be dead. That's that's the rhyme that I'm creating here. Because Wait, what's up? Run that back? <laughs> Run that back? Is that some, uh, is that some anti-communist propaganda I hear there, Sam? Uh. Kind anyway, of, <laughs> anyway, kind of, back- actually, I, I, I'm I'm totally fine coming out against <laughs> communism. That's actually not a, that's actually a position I'm gonna be very comfortable bro, bro, in taking. A, that's the wrong podcast, bro. This ain't the Ben Shapiro podcast. Oh, oh, John, guys. By the way, go and link where we have our uh, <laughs> podcast, uh, Future of America the, podcast. Uh, this video talked about gerrymandering and racial biases in America. <laughs> so it's a very intellectual talk. I think you guys should uh, just dive in and. <laughs> kind of a joy it's okay. like it's like three hours long it's like a harvard right. level conversation right. we're trying to get as big as joe rogan so yeah you guys can help us out uh, by the way that podcast is way bigger that has like forty thousand listeners per month right so right we're, obviously we're, we're, we're we this get is all kind of like yeah. a side podcast right. yeah if you guys aren't listening to the main one you guys where are you even and if you're anyways, if you're listen if you're a single woman and you're wondering where the podcast is just make sure to dm me on instagram uh i'll answer them all the time so just make sure to just let me know you're yeah, to find that one. Uh, yeah, Mike is always dumb. Uh, absolutely. So absolutely. Okay. Anyways, back to the <laughs> cornerback room. Anyways, cornerback room, right? We're talking about a position that the Seahawks are known for. It has the Seahawks dynasty of corners. There's Richard Sherman. There's Byron Maxwell. There's Brandon Browner. There's Shaq Griffin. There's DJ. John Reed, Springs, too, if you want to throw him in John there. John Springs. If you even want to go all the way back, you talk about Dave Brown. Marcus Trufant. Oh man, that's my guy right there. I love Trufant. It's a it, it's a team of a it, it, it's a corner dynasty. It's a corner dynasty. So looking at the room now, it's a little strange. It is very much strange. We have four slot corners on the roster. Nice, questionable. Um, and we have right. two outside corners on the roster, and Trey Brown and Sidney Jones. So Trey Brown is coming off of – he's a rookie duo. who's coming off of tearing his – what did he tear? Trey Brown is a dog. Watch Trey my Brown's most dog. recent watch, – watch the uh, Seahawks top five breakouts video. He's – 100%. Incredible. But uh, what did Trey tear last year? He tore his um, – Patella tendon. Patella tendon. So he's Patella a rookie tendon. coming off. Yeah. And then we got Sidney Jones. And then who else after that? Uh, Artie Burns. Burns slot. Ugo Mati slot. Marquise Blair slot. And Justin Coleman slot. Nice. Okay, so we need to improve <laughs> nice. that corner for sure. Yeah. Um, but I think looking at the Seahawks, obviously we have a lot of money freed up. I wonder how that – oh, we got all this money. We must have been so creative with our personnel decisions. Um, we have the number nine we, overall We still pick. have money. We have like $17 million left. We have, we we, have no, money. that's what I'm saying. We have money. We have the number nine overall pick. So there are definitely – we will not – we will acquire another corner – before the season starts, I you will probably acquire two more corners. At, before I would the say starts. at least two. Um, so the question becomes: Who, where, and why? what, when, why, how? Yeah, uh, whatever English know, just, words you want to use there. Um, I think the, could you know uh, any any should, one word thing any, any any one word thing that had like a, that has like a question mark afterwards. Just apply it to that. Yeah, you know just. Um, I think the most obvious answer would probably would look to the number nine overall pick. I've talked to Sam before off camera. I said, listen, if sauce Gardner is there at nine, I think you got to pull the trigger. Uh, It could be very likely um, or it might not be very likely. I don't know. Guess who was sent to Cincinnati's pro day. Um, uh, Director of player personnel for the Seattle Seahawks. Wow. He, and every just, other pro day, he was just there to look, Dave he was, he was just there to look at Desmond Ritter, but who who we can? He was just there to look at Desmond well, Ritter. For, well, what I'm saying is that, interestingly, no, every single quarterback tryout that has been gone to has been attended by Dave Canales, the quarterback's coach, who went to Sam Howell's pro day today. He went to Matt Corral's pro day. He went to uh, Billy Bills' pro day. went to Kenny Pickett's pro day. And, uh, for Very Mac- interesting. and then for the Cincinnati pro day, they sent a different guy, which makes me think that they're probably, they're looking at sauce and they have Kobe. officially designated him for a top 30, uh, visit, which is a thing. I don't know what yeah. it exactly is, but it's something where, speaking of, it's something where you have to like 
put in a request so it's openly known that he's visiting your team. Right. Um, speaking of Cincinnati corners, I wouldn't put it past Kobe Bryant in the fourth or fifth round to come to Seattle. I mean, I Kobe really Bryant, would. There's a few uh, Washington guys, Kyler mm-hmm. Gordon, Trent McDuffie. Uh, Josh Joe Derek from Stingley Alabama, I could might, see. Might, Derek Stingley might be a bit of a pipe dream, but he's a I dog. Think, I think Gardner is better than Stingley, and that's what I'm saying. So if, I if think Gardner's Gardner is better than Stingley, but I'm understanding that Stingley's getting more hype in those top yeah. eight picks than Sauce. If Stingley's there at nine, if if Gardner's gone, if Stingley's there at nine, are you taking Stingley at nine? Just just throwing that out there. Real it quick. depends. Like if there's like a Charles Cross, I might side with Cross. True. True. If there's a Kayvon Thibodeau, I'm going to say Kayvon um, Thibodeau. As the days continue, I am getting increasingly more convinced that the Seahawks are either going tackle or corner at pick nine. That's like edge. I'm. I'm. Uh, all I'm going to say is that I'm becoming increasingly convinced that they're not going to pick a quarterback. The the only way I think they take edge at nine is if Thibodeau falls. If he falls, yeah, I can see them taking nine. But like or like if Trayvon if, Walker falls too, that might. Mm, I don't know if I'd pick Trayvon Walker at nine. To be Trayvon honest. Walker's a bit a bit more versatile than Kayvon yeah. Thibodeau. But yeah, Thibodeau's you know, got the, Thibodeau falls to nine. Thibodeau, yeah, Thibodeau got that clowny comparison though, and that does kind of scare me. But who knows? Anyway, um, Kayvon so we could Thibodeau. we took could take corner in the draft. Obviously, we just named a few guys to take at nine: Sauce, Stingley. Uh, later rounds, we could take Kyler Gordon, Trent McDuffie, Josh Job. Um, who was the other guy from from LSU we were talking about yesterday? Um, Wooly, we could take. He's not from LSU. Wooly, we could take. Trey Woolen, Woolen, yeah. Excuse me, Wooly. Um, I'm um, gonna. I'm actually gonna take a look at at cornerbacks in the draft this year. Yeah. So, and our, if you guys have noticed in our mock drafts recently, we've been taking a lot of corners. That's because you know, it's a big issue of need, and it's something that um, we you uh, need defense, right. Okay, so kind of looking around at outside corners, um, uh, Sauce Gardner, Derek Stingley, Trent McDuffie. This is rankings from Sports Illustrated. Uh, Andrew Booth out of Clemson, Roger McCreary out of Auburn, Okair Elam out of Florida, who tested very, very well today. Uh, mm-hmm. So if, if he might be a potential trade back into the first round kind of guy. Yeah. Maybe a few underrated guys. Marcus Jones out of Houston has played pretty well the last few years. Uh, Martin Emerson out of Mississippi State. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's a fairly deep corner class, is what you. Yeah. So I would I would guarantee we take a corner at least at some point in the draft. Um, I would put a lot of money on that. So you can address one there. Uh, so obviously the draft is is going to be a big way for us to get good young talent at corner. But Sam, if you were John Schneider and you had to you know, pick a corner that's left in free agency. Who would you go with? I think the market has really died on Stephon Gilmore, if I'm being honest. Yeah, but uh, does he fit the team at I all? So. I don't think so. And that's what I'm saying. But are you almost at the point where you're like, we just need corner so bad, we're just going to take whoever, regardless of fit? Or are you still like, we want a guy that's going to fit, blah, blah, blah. Um, Cal, I, know Cal I don't know. I think there. that if we place a bid, it's going to – turn into a bidding war. That's my concern because I don't want to get, get in a bidding war for a guy like Stefan Gilmore. He's the kind of guy who I would want if he was, like, easy to get. Like, it's just like, oh, Stefan Gilmore's there. Okay, well, we're, well, we're going to get him. You know, like, it's not yeah. like, oh, we're fighting with, like, seven out of teams for Stefan Gilmore. Right. The corner, overall, like, free agent class is kind of dead. Um, it really is, yeah. We, it's we can- not really – that like even guys that were expecting to get paid, like JC Jackson got less than I thought, if I'm being honest. Uh JC got what five for 83, I think. Uh, like, yeah, I mean he got five for 82 and a half. Yeah. That's I mean, not that expensive. That's I, less I thought than he was gonna Adams. go for I thought he was gonna go for five for a hundo. Like a hundred. So. Yeah. I thought he was going to get paid, but uh, he must so. have taken a discount to go to the Chargers. Looking at guys who are free agents, uh, like according to like Spot Track, that are corners. Best available guys are like uh, Stefan Gilmore, Joe Hayden. Uh, sneaky get could be Kyle Fuller. Mm, he kind of was. He was bad of, last year, but yeah. Sean Desai, maybe for, he moves for, back in that system and he's good. Uh, guys that would be worth our time, like Kevin King, I guess, has potential. 
Yeah. Problem with these, a lot of the corners left, they're just old. Like, it's like, damn. Kevin King has potential. Xavier Rhodes might be a decent get. Xavier Rhodes could be nice. I could see I could see the uh, the Seahawks snagging up. But you get guys Rhodes. that are, like, young that might be able to be like, oh, they're kind of decent. Like, like, I don't really see any of them, you know? They're yeah. all, like, they scrubs. solid. They scrub you know, low-key. But... And I think another uh, – I think another variable we have to address here is are you how how do you feel about how the DJ Reed um contract talks with the Seahawks went? Because he signed with the Jets, as we know, and he he's come out offers disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say he called his offer disrespectful. How, I imagine that the Seahawks probably offered like eight or nine. And I, I mean, yeah. I don't like like when you imagine disrespectful, you imagine like several like like five plus million under his asking price. I don't imagine that we probably been that low. I mean, well, and I think it's it was probably the same thing that happened with Shrek, Shrek with Shaq Griffin last year, where it was like he wanted to come back, we wanted him back, we have an offer for him. Somebody beat the offer, and just we weren't willing to match them, and so we'll let it we'll let him go for more money than we were going to keep him. You know what I mean? I, I imagine it went something like that. Um, yeah, didn't right. Shaq, didn't Shaq get like 16 from the Jaguars? He Shaq got, got a like 15 of, a year. Yeah, he got a lot of money. I was not – and I was happy with that. I was not wanting to pay 15 million yeah. a year for Shaq Griffin. I thought maybe DJ Reed's contract was a little more reasonable with the Jets. Um, I could have liked – I would have liked to see the Seahawks maybe offer that up, but it is what it is, I yeah. guess. I would, I would say that – I would say that for me, I think Kyle Fuller is the most intriguing name on the market because he would be so inexpensive. Yeah. I think you could get him for a veteran minimum and it would be I, yeah. such a low gamble that have a it would be it would be a signing that would generate essentially zero risk to yeah. to, to the team. And, and he isn't that decide he's, he's familiar decide. with Desai. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it, it would be interesting. I I could see that too. I can almost see like a one or two year, like probably a one year prove it deal where it's like prove you can still go out there and play. Because last year he was getting cooked. Like my man's, you know, the bad. You know the he was genuinely uh, bad. But the Hannibal Burris meme where it's like I'm not gonna lie, man, I'm getting cooked. That was him <laughs> yeah. all year last year. <laughs> Listen, um, I think I think it would be a solid get. Very like I said, very low risk what does it hurt at all to bring him in on a one or $2 million deal? Get him with Desai, a guy who he's familiar with. And I'm, I'm relatively sure that there might, that Desai might be like asking for him. He might want him and on the team. We did get Artie Burns, Connecticut. Uh, sorry, I'm watching the UConn game. And blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, no, that Chicago connection. Yep. Is there, you would want that, you know? You do, you do. So, would would last thing I'll say, and then we could wrap this up. Would you be happy if the Seahawks went out and signed Kyle Fuller and then picked Sauce and or Sauce or Stingley at number nine? Is that like an okay? I feel decent about the corner position right I now. I think you need five outside corners. We'd have Sauce, Kyle Fuller, Trey, and Sydney. We so you say pick up another one. We have what eight draft picks this year? Seven draft picks this year. I think we should at least odds, use two of Odds are we would take two corners. What if we just go full Cincinnati, we draft Sauce and, and Kobe, and just let them do their thing like they were doing at Cincinnati? That would be pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, it would, I mean, it would be an experiment. Would you know? not put it past John Schneider at all. Mm-mm. I would not put it past John Schneider to draft Kobe Bryant and think he was talking about the basketball player either. I, or I wouldn't put that past, past Pete, to be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, so, Oldest coach in the NFL, you know. I mean, yeah. you don't know what's gonna happen. You never know. But, but we're kind of forgetting one medium here: trade. Ooh. There's there's a guy who's on the board right now, notably on the board. His name is James Bradbury. Yes, James Bradbury is available, supposedly, hopefully. And I mean, what do you think about that? I just I have a problem giving. I don't know. I don't want to give up any draft assets to get a corner. Like that just doesn't seem like a, a good strategy in my opinion. Um, well, I mean, would you when... be willing to go up like a fourth for James Bradbury? 
It's Eddie because I, I can reliably say that we would not get a better player in the fourth round than James Bradbury. Yeah. Well, well, you know, John and Pete are kind of the kings of drafting those DBs. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, like, what are the last cornerbacks that we've picked, like, in order? Trey we Brown. Trey Brown. Mm-hmm. 2020, did we pick a corner? We had, like, no. We didn't no. pick a corner that year. We didn't. Uh, oh, oh, Ugo, Ugo, Ugo. No, that was 2019. 2019, oh, we picked that was Ugo. Yeah, yeah. 2018, we picked Trey Flowers. We... Oh, if you want to count 2019 as well, we, t- we picked Marquise Blair. Who's Wait, to be two safety? Who's kind of, yeah, he's been, yeah. He's been he's been solid in his time at, at slot corner. He just has not been able to stay healthy. Right. Uh, you know, so I mean, mm, I would so say tough. I would say you sign a, a corner, e.g., Kyle Fuller, a veteran. He would be the oldest guy in the room. He'd be the teacher. Xavier Rhodes is another guy right here. Xavier Rhodes. He would be the oldest guy in the room. You know, you need a veteran. This the, the, this is a team that's really, really, really desperately lacking a veteran presence in that corner room. You probably need a Kyle Fuller. Yeah, Kyle Fuller in. makes sense just with the. the if you the, want a guy to teach the Sean Desai technique to the corners. Well, Desai I mean, and Hurt. I mean, Hurt was with the Bears too. Yeah, yeah. So. From what I understand, that it's going to be like a co DC group. Yeah. It's going to be Desai and Carl Scott running. Oh, Carl Scott. Yeah. Vikings quarterback coach. True. Xavier Rhodes. Yeah. Xavier. Xavier Rhodes. I keep saying Xavier. I'm thinking of Howard. Yeah. Xavier Rhodes. Yeah. Hey, oh, hey I'll take Xavier Howard. No, but anyways, like. I uh, love me some Xavier Howard. Let's think about, like, I-, I would say that the smartest thing to do is you take two cornerbacks in the draft, regardless if you take one at nine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Regardless if you take one at nine, take, take two in the later rounds. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Totally agree. Totally agree. I would ultimately say that. Kyle Fuller seems like a perfect move for this team in the sense that he's a veteran. He knows the decide technique. Yeah. It's going to be very low risk. Yeah. And he'll be the veteran in the room. He can teach him. If he gets cut before training camp, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. You give him like little to no guaranteed money. You know, it's a what's, proven. What's vet, what's vet minimum? Vet minimum is like $1. Oh, $1. Mil? Half, $2 million. I was going to say like one and a half. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm fine with that, honestly. So I think, I think this is not the off season where we completely overhaul our quarterback room. But if our guy at nine hits, it well, I think we we trust Trey Brown in, I trust in Trey an Brown. outside cornerback yeah. room to take a step. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm Trey- also saying that I don't think I think Sidney Jones, if he plays like how he did last year, I'm totally confident with having him being the second corner. Yeah. No, I don't think that you need to pick a starter at nine unless if it's like Sauce Gardner and you know he is the guy for you. And then, right. then it's different. But right. if right. it's if it's you know you don't need to pick a Kyler Gordon or a Trent McDuffie at nine because sure they're they're good they're solid players but they're not they're they're not incredible they're not game changing and they're ultimately not what you need I feel so the only two yeah i would agree the only two game changing corners are stingley and sauce those are the only two stingley and sauce those are the only guys that i would feel confident picking at nine yeah at corner yeah so you know what it is what it is um yeah let us know what you guys think of how we should improve this cornerback room should is there a guy that you want to sign a free agency is there some hidden gem from a D3 school that you think is going to be the next Darrell Revis, let us know down below. We're obviously, we're always looking at your comments, even the mean ones. We're always looking at your comments. Uh, we're always getting feedback, and then we're, we talk about them all the time. So we appreciate all the love. Uh, let us know. Uh, like the video if you haven't already, assuming you enjoyed, which, come on, you, you know you did. You know you enjoyed it. I, you, know, you know you enjoyed it. Don't be don't be salty. You know yeah. you liked it. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. So uh without further ado, I think that's gonna do it for us. We will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.